Well, yes, certainly sleep apnea is an obstruction of the upper airway when people are sleeping. Um, you know, there's different body habituses and, and that cause this particular problem. But as the upper airway is constricted during sleep, it actually causes fragmentation of the sleep cycle and, and causes multiple arousals through the night. And those multiple arousals through the night actually lead, you know, to uh, fatigue. And it also leads to other, you know, profound medical problems such as heart disease, stroke, high blood pressure. Now, we've seen a number of studies suggesting that possibly as many as one-third of suckers you were take may suffer sleep apnea in one form or another. Is, is, is that accurate in your opinion? Yeah, I think it's very accurate. You know, FMCSA's own data show, you know, they show that 28% of the commercial driving population has sleep apnea. But there's also other studies out there that look at a variety of different risks and predictive factors that I'll actually show that up to 50% of the commercial drivers are at risk. When we see when we're reviewing exams that the number is probably closer to the FMCSA number, but it is still a, a, a significant minority. So 28% to 30% is actually a really good number. Well, you mentioned you, you use the word risk. I mean, if you could share with us a little bit about the risk surrounding sleep apnea that, that drivers and police need to know about. Well, yeah, certainly. When, when you look at risk and when you start looking at risk for sleep apnea, age is certainly a factor. So the older we get, the more risk for sleep apnea we get. Also, the older we get and the, actually the fatter we get, the more risk of sleep apnea. So body habitus has a lot to play with it. As we get older, more sedentary and we gain weight, it's actually that, that extra weight that then increases our risk of having upper airway uh, dysfunction when we're sleeping that then actually causes the sleep apnea. Now, FMCSA seems to be considering uh, regulating the, the testing sleep apnea. Is that something you think would be a, a wise idea for the agency to do? Yeah, I believe it's, it's really wise. I know FMCSA, uh, with the rollout of the Certified Medical Examiner Program, was trying to propagate guidance in regards to telling the examiners when to compel a driver to get a sleep study uh, that was uh, shut down by Congress by saying that they were making you know, de facto regulation without going through the official rulemaking process. But I believe it's, it will be really advantageous for the industry and all, to, you know, not only you know, the companies, the examiners, but also the drivers. They have a uniform standard which basically looks at risk and then defines who needs a sleep study. That'll level the playing field, and then you won't have various examiners using a variety of different guidances to compel who gets a study and who doesn't. Let's talk a little bit about the diagnosis and, and testing process. So what, what goes into all of it? Well, sir, the traditional means of to get a sleep, you know, so to speak, sleep apnea diagnosis is going through an official, you know, polysomnogram. So it's a uh, so to speak, a clinic-based study uh, where a person goes in uh, to a sleep center, uh, they get set up for the test, and they're monitored overnight. And after that, the, the, the sleep specialist will be able to then make a diagnosis based upon the parameters of, that comes back after that test. Uh, evolution of the industry and what we here at Hyrite offer is actually a home sleep study. So home sleep studies are something that a driver can be set up for. They're FDA approved, and actually the American you know, Academy of Sleep Medicine also approves these devices. To have, you know, it's a simple device that can be hooked up with a chain of custody, which basically assures that the person test hooked up is the person tested. And then these people are able to then, you know, sleep where they normally sleep, whether it's in the back of their, you know, uh, truck in their sleeper cab, or if it's at home or in a hotel room. And then interrogation of that data will then allow a, 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 you know, a board certified sleep specialist to go through evaluate it and determine if the, the person has sleep apnea or not. 